I buy my meat locally at my local farmer's market because I like knowing where the meat comes from and I like actually knowing how the animals live. If I'm going to buy meat of any kind as a vegan, if I'm going to buy meat of any kind as a vegan, if I'm going to buy meat of any kind as a vegan, what you just heard was the most idiotic, contradictory, and hypocritical statement ever uttered by a human being. So for those of you unfamiliar with Rayleigh Link 14, she is a fake vegan who murders animals so that she can feed those chopped up murdered animals to her dogs. And uh, she just recently made two videos on this topic. The first was titled The Scary Truth About Dog Food. And she made a follow up to this after she received a bunch of criticism titled that vegan teacher abuses her dog, and as you're about to find out, it's not that vegan teacher who's abusing her dogs, or any animals for that matter. So in typical fashion, we're going to go through both of these videos, and I'm going to explain in detail why Rayleigh Link is wrong about everything, and she is a pathological liar. There are an estimated 500 million domestic dogs worldwide, and all of them are related. At the base of their evolutionary tree stands the gray wolf, from which every type and breed of dog has descended. As genetics have discovered in terms of DNA, the difference between wolf and dog is infinitesimal or otherwise very small. Some researchers even concluding that dogs and wolves share 99.9% .9 of their DNA and are technically the same species. So we're only a couple minutes into her video and she already made a pretty dumb mistake. She doesn't understand the definition of species. Species are related organisms that can interbreed and produce viable offspring. Since dogs and wolves are related and can interbreed and produce viable offspring, dogs and wolves are, in fact, the same species. They're not technically the same species, they are the same species. She just doesn't understand taxonomy. If you look at a phylogenetic tree, dogs and wolves share the same species, Canis lupus. It's just that uh, domesticated dogs, they're classified in a subspecies called Canis lupus familiaris, and if you look at any recent paper comparing dogs and wolves, again, dogs are classified as the same species, they're just given the subspecies Canis lupus familiaris. And the reason Rayleigh makes mistakes like this is obviously because she's not particularly smart, but on top of that, she doesn't bother to ensure she's getting her information from scientifically valid sources. Uh, you'll notice in that clip she popped a bit of text on screen, but where did that text come from? She deliberately hides her sources of information to make it appear as though it's more scientifically valid and she got this from some kind of study, but in reality, she's just getting this information from random blog articles or online news sources that aren't valid sources of scientific information. And if you use the Google, turns out she got this little snippet from a site called LabRoots which is just an online scientific news site, uh, but obviously their information isn't the most accurate, and she does this throughout her entire video. She cherry picks bad sources of information that aren't scientifically valid so that she can just very poorly support the just idiotic claim she, uh, she's making. As many people point out, dogs are estimated to have evolved with humans as long as 30,000 years ago. Although some say that dogs have quote unquote evolved to eat the same as humans, this is actually untrue. Dogs still share the exact same digestive tract and digestive system as their ancestors. And I think the word evolved is the wrong word to be used here, since dogs have only only been with humans for the last 30,000 years or so, adaptation is the proper word choice. And this is the process of adjusting something to better match its environment or situation. So why is this important? Well, many people argue in defense of the processed food industry that dogs have quote co-evolved, which is the wrong terminology to use, to eat certain starchy foods. This is not very accurate, although dogs have 
developed more enzymes than wolves to easily digest foods like starches and carbohydrates, this does not mean that this is what these dogs are designed to be eating. So Rayleigh made another big mistake and she doesn't understand what evolution is. Evolution is a change in inheritable traits over a population through successive generations. Now, the little snippet that Rayleigh showed on screen was taken from the Khan Academy. Now, the Khan Academy has been criticized for being a less than reputable source of information, and they often provide confusing and inaccurate articles. And to be fair, uh, if you read this article, it is a bit confusing if you don't read carefully, but what Rayleigh misunderstood in this article was that Adaptation is a result of natural selection and evolution. They're not two completely separate things where a species can adapt but not evolve. So she just misunderstood this article and now she believes that adaptation is a less good or less complete form of evolution or something. It makes no sense, but what she's basically saying is Dogs have adapted, but not evolved, to eat more plant foods, therefore we should only feed them raw meat. Makes no sense, and this is all based on misinformation that she got from an article that she didn't understand. All carnivores, including dogs and cats, also have very short digestive tracts compared to vegetarian animals. They thrive on consuming fresh, living, and whole foods, but not clean foods. But their diet was, in fact, moisture dense, which means a lot of water. The prey was primarily water, about 70%. It was high in protein and minerals, and moderate in fat, and very low carbohydrate. So Rayleigh played a clip of this orange woman in her video, and again, this is not a valid source of scientific information. This is not a journal article, it's not a study, it's just some random person you found online spouting nonsense. Now, this woman, Dr. Karen Becker, she is a veterinarian, but she's not well respected in her field, and she's regarded as a quack. This woman is an anti-vaxxer who overstates the dangers of vaccines and recommends against established vaccination schedules for your pets. She promotes useless pseudoscience like detoxing and homeopathic medicine, which has been proven not to do anything. And she's even partnered with Mercola, another well-known fraud who has claimed to have successfully treated all autism using treatments that have been proven not to work, and he's also another anti-vaxxer who falsely marketed many of his own supplements, claiming they will make you immune to cancer or help prevent or treat COVID-19. So does this woman sound like a reliable source of information? Obviously not, and what happened here was Rayleigh was unable to find any valid scientific sources to support her claims that a raw meat diet for dogs and cats is the ideal diet for them, so she just resorted to finding any random quack with a veterinary degree she could find, and she eventually found this orange woman. And it really just shows you how little she cares about the health of her own dogs, let alone other people's pets, if she's willing to promote a quack like this, a woman who undermines established veterinary medicine in favor of supporting just useless garbage pseudoscience like homeopathy. When you think about it, dog food companies care about making money and not necessarily about the health and longevity of your animal, which is one of the biggest reasons why we've had an increased rise in dog cancer, obesity, and other illnesses in the previous decades leading up to current day that dog food has been the cause for. So once again, Rayleigh did not provide any scientifically valid information to support her claims. That article that she flashed on screen was taken from an online blog called Leica, and the author of this article is a woman named Anna Podolsky, who is not a veterinarian. She has no formal training or expertise in veterinary medicine, pet nutrition, nothing. Uh, just some random woman who's interested in dogs wrote this article. And if you actually bother to read this article, it had nothing to do with increasing rates of obesity, diabetes, and cancer in dogs. This article specifically focused on what foods 
could cause cancer in dogs, and the author linked to an article by the National Cancer Institute, which discussed carcinogens in cooked meat, which can affect humans. So Rayleigh claimed that conventional commercial pet food causes cancer in dogs, among other diseases, yet she did not provide any evidence to support her claims, and she even went as far as to lie about the contents of an online blog article. You know, Rayleigh, usually when smart people can't provide evidence for their claims, they change their opinions, but I guess we can't expect that of you. Uh, Rayleigh also claimed that because dogs are eating, like, conventional food, you know, normal dog kibble, uh, that's making them less healthy, that's making them not live as long. That's not really true, and I think she got this idea from that quack vet, Dr. Karen Baker. Uh, she wrote an article where she claimed, according to a 2004 and 2014 UK Kennel Club report, median longevity of Britain's purebred dogs dropped by 11% in one decade. Well, if you actually bother reading the 2014 Kennel Club report, they state, please note there were substantial differences in the way the 2014 survey was conducted compared to the purebred dog health survey, which was carried out in 2004. The 2014 survey was directed at owners of all dogs registered with the Kennel Club over the past 10 years and promoted to the general dog owning public, whereas the 2004 survey was publicized solely to breed clubs. Given the differences in methodology between the surveys, the data from each is not fully compa uh, comparable, and differences observed do not definitely imply changes in population parameters. Furthermore, there were 5,864 deaths reported in the 2014 survey compared to 15,881 deaths reported in the 2004 survey. The significant drop reduces the likelihood of the sample accurately representing the wider dog population, and so would likely have an impact on median longevity figures if the two sets of data were compared, which would not be reliable. And if you look at the distribution of deaths in the 2004 and 2014 surveys, the distribution is almost identical. The small shift in the median is likely just due to the changes in sample sizes and just the method of data collection. And on top of that, uh, there were more dogs in the 2014 survey living over the age of 20, and the longest living dog in the 2014 survey was 26, and the longest living dog in the 2004 survey was 23. So that would indicate to me that there was probably either no change in longevity of these animals, or possibly there's been a bit of an increase. So Rayleigh, this Dr. Karen Baker that you've been relying on as a source of information is completely unreliable, and she's feeding you misinformation to scare idiots like you into buying her products and services. No matter how high quality your kibble is, it is still oftentimes very highly processed. The more highly processed the food, the less nutrients are bioavailable for your animal. And once again, Rayleigh does not provide any sort of scientific evidence for her claims. That little text that popped up on screen, that was taken from an article that came from this website, Raw Bistro Pet Fair, which which sells raw dog food. Clearly not a scientifically valid, unbiased source, and if you read the article, they provide absolutely no evidence for their claims. There are no citations anywhere. So Rayleigh, if you're going to claim that cooked commercial dog food leads to any kind of disease process or reduces a dog's longevity, then provide evidence for that claim in the form of research. I think you know exactly what you're doing. You're putting the these texts up on screen with no reference to where you're getting these sources from because you know these sources are inadequate. You know you cannot provide any evidence for your claims and you're deliberately trying to spread misinformation. So if dog kibble is so highly processed and so bad for dogs, causing them cancer, obesity, certain tooth-related diseases, why is it that veterinarians recommend dog food? Because there's absolutely no evidence that raw pet food has any benefit. If there was any evidence of benefit, I'm sure you would have provided evidence for it, but you didn't because no such evidence exists. Rayleigh, if you're going to claim that raw pet food in increases a dog's lifespan or reduces the risk of disease, 
then provide that evidence. Where's the research? You have not provided any evidence for this claim, yet you keep repeating the same falsehoods. Well, the answer might upset you a little bit. Almost all veterinary schools are funded by large dog food companies. A lot of the pet food industry research for veterinarians are also funded by dog food companies. So now she's become an Alex Jones conspiracy theorist. She can't provide any evidence for her claims that raw pet food results in better overall health outcomes than conventional pet food. So now she's just claiming, oh, well, veterinarians, they're part of some Illuminati conspiracy conspiracy to torture and murder your dogs. People are obviously looking for a better alternative for their pets, and they're obviously looking for a better alternative for the environment. It's no wonder that vegan and vegetarian dog foods have come on the market. But are these dog kibbles any better? And can dogs actually eat a vegan or vegetarian diet? The short answer is yes, but it turns out to be a bit more complicated than that. Dogs can be vegetarian and vegan. However, before switching your dog over to any new food, you always need to consult your veterinarian. I think this is evidence that she doesn't even believe in her own bullshit. She just said vets are all liars. All they're interested in is money and and they're paid shills for the pet food industry. But apparently when, you know, deciding to switch your dog food, you have to consult your veterinarian. Didn't you just tell us not to trust veterinarians, but now you're telling us to rely on veterinarians? You're full of shit. You're just a goddamn liar. However, I think it is important to recognize that dogs are not herbivores. Dogs are carnivores, although they do sometimes eat different fruits and vegetables, making them omnivores as well. You don't have to be a veterinarian to realize the oral anatomy in a dog and that it is designed for ripping and shredding pieces of meat, as well as the short digestive tract, which is designed for digesting raw meat. Okay, so first of all, Rayleigh is making an appeal to nature fallacy. She's claiming that because dogs are naturally carnivorous or omnivorous, a purely plant-based diet couldn't possibly be good for them. That's just ridiculous, unless you can actually provide evidence that a purely plant-based diet leads to any kind of disease process in these animals, you can't make that claim just because dogs have pointy teeth. Yeah, evidence is actually required for your claims, I'm afraid. And on top of that, you know that little text that she showed at the bottom of the screen in the video? Well, that comes from a source called Veterinary Practice News. Well, guess what Veterinary Practice News has to say about raw diets for dogs? So let's take a look at this article first, Debating Raw Diets. The idea raw diet should be beneficial because they are natural is simply simply an expression of the appeal to nature fallacy, the misconception that anything found in nature is inherently healthier than anything produced by humans. Illustrations of why this is false are easy to find. Consider for example that dysentery, smallpox, and rattlesnake venom are perfectly natural, and antibiotics, vaccines, and antivenom are clearly artificial, yet there's no doubt that the latter are certainly better for health than the former. It is also clear natural is not a synonym for healthy from the fact that paratism parasitism, malnutrition, and infectious disease are rampant in wild animal populations, and that life expectancy and health are nearly always superior for animals in appropriate captive environments. The diet of wild carnivores is simply the food they can get, not a perfect diet designed for long-term health. Experts in captive wild carnivore nutrition recommend commercial foods as a significant component of the overall uh, diet of these species because such foods improve the safety and nutritional quality of the diet, and the health of these animals. There is no compelling evidence for any of the specific health benefits claimed for raw diets, and there's been very little research investigating them. The few published studies of raw feeding have found various effects on physiologic and clinical parameters, but little sign of any significant health effects, so most health claims are purely anecdotal at this point. And the risks of raw diets, unlike the benefits of raw diets, which are theoretical and unproven, the risks are well documented. Commercial raw diets that meet Association of American 
America feed control official standards are likely to be nutritionally complete, but many raw ad advocates feed home prepared diets, and these diets are frequently nutritionally unbalanced and incomplete. The widespread use of bones and raw diets also present a significant risk of dental fractures and gastrointestinal injury. Though one study has suggested some possible benefits for dental health, even wild carnivores are at risk for acute dental and gastrointestinal trauma from bones, as well as chronic tooth wear, and this can lead to the natural outcomes of suffering or death. Pet dogs and cats are at least as susceptible to the risks as wild carnivores, and the natural outcomes are clearly unacceptable to owners. The most significant risk of raw diets is from foodborne infectious disease. Illness and death in cats and dogs and in their owners have been caused by pathogens found in raw pet diets. Although such pathogens can contaminate cooked diets as well, the risk is significantly higher for raw foods. While healthy, immunocompetent adult pets may be able to resist these organisms to some extent, there is no absolute immunity in dogs and cats to foodborne illness. Young, old, immunosuppressed animals and their human caregivers are at an even greater risk. Bottom line, there are no proven health benefits to raw diets, and most of the claims rest on dubious theoretical grounds and exaggerated fears about conventional cooked diets. There are, however, clear risks to feeding raw meat, including nutritional deficiencies or excesses, risk of injury from bones, and risk of severe infection and death in both pets and humans. So isn't that funny? The source you referenced in your video seems to disagree with you on raw food diets for pets. How come you didn't show this article in your video, Rayleigh? You're totally fine with sharing bullshit blog articles written by biased sources with no relevant research links, but the one valid resource you provide that's written by veterinarians that actually provides relevant research links you just totally ignore. Gee, it's almost as if you're a biased, lying moron and you're deliberately trying to spread misinformation. And remember, Rayleigh chose to hide the fact that she used veterinary practice news as a source in her video, so you know exactly what she's doing. She's deliberately trying to hide reputable sources because she knows if you check out that reputable source, you'll find out that her video is filled with complete bullshit, bad misinformation that could actually harm your dog, and you shouldn't eat raw foods. And as far as the article that Veterinary Practice News made on vegan and vegetarian diets for pets, they didn't have a negative overall view on vegan diets for pets. They just recommended precaution. They referenced this study, Vegetarian versus Meat-Based Diet for Companion Animals, and in the study they concluded it is entirely possible for companion animals to survive and indeed thrive on vegetarian diets. However, these must be nutritionally complete and reasonably balanced, and owners should regularly monitor urinary uh, acidity and should correct for urinary alkali alkalinization through appropriate dietary additives if it occurs. So Rayleigh's own sources are saying Guess what? Chances are vegan vegetarian diets are fine for cats and dogs. You just have to make sure they're getting an adequate diet. Dogs and cats are carnivores, which means they are meat eaters and they don't digest plant material very efficiently at all. Dogs are scavenging carnivores and kitties are obligate carnivores. And nature designed the bodies of carnivores to thrive on nutrients provided by animal flesh and organ meat. And surviving means just that, that they can get by by consuming some plant material or an abundance of plant material, or in this situation, all plant material, but they will never healthfully live a long lifespan as they should, and they will have medical and degenerative conditions along the way. Dogs and cats are super resilient. They're really strong animals, so you actually can nutritionally abuse them, and they don't die instantaneously. Their bodies degenerate over time, but because they can withstand nutritional abuse, it doesn't make it okay to do it, in my opinion. Well, as I demonstrated earlier, your opinion doesn't count for shit. All this woman can do is just make an appeal to nature fallacy. Oh, this diet isn't natural. This diet's processed. Chemicals are bad for you. Well, unless you can prove that a particular diet leads to some kind of disease process, 
You have nothing. You have absolutely no evidence. Rayleigh is platforming this fraud who is giving harmful misinformation that is actually harming not only pets, but also humans. Vegan and vegetarian kibble is no better for your dog's health and also is oftentimes a lot more highly processed in order to get the right ingredients to meet the dog's daily nutritional needs. You still run the same risk of your dog developing cancer and other health conditions, as well as there is no additional better impact on the environment due to the factoring facilities and the carbon emissions that these places still emit because they are still processing these kibbles in factories. So vegan kibble in short is really no different from feeding other types of kibble. It's not better for your dog. All kibble together is basically just terrible for the environment and for your dog. The risk here is just not worth the reward. And again, she's just making more claims that she can't substantiate with evidence. She's claiming that, oh, vegan kibble will give your dog cancer. Where's the evidence for that? Can you please provide me one single study showing a raw food diet prevents cancer? No, of course you can't. If you could, you would have done it by now. You are just a liar. And you're claiming, oh, vegan kibble is pretty much just as bad for the environment. Source? Link? Anything? You didn't even bother putting some random piece of text on screen for that one. You're literally just talking out of your ass at this point. And if you are going to feed your dog a vegan or vegetarian food, I think it is important to recognize that many veterinarians pointed out the lack of studies and evidence to support the health and longevity of a dog's life long term on a vegan or vegetarian diet is just not there yet, so your animal is a essentially going to be a guinea pig, which is not what I think a lot of people want their pets to be. I think it is important to note that just because your dog is surviving on a type of kibble does not mean that they are thriving on it, and it does not mean that your dog is living a good quality life. Yeah, so this is just hypocritical and stupid. For one thing, you can obviously achieve nutritional adequacy for cat or dog on a plant-based diet, of course, assuming it's appropriately planned and formulated. But unless you have any evidence that a plant-based diet necessarily leads to any kind of disease process in these animals, why would you be concerned? You have not been able to provide one single shred of scientific evidence for any of the claims you've made in this entire video, so now you've just resorted to trying to spread doubt. Who knows what could happen? Like, there's not much research. Maybe if you feed your cat or dog a plant-based diet, it'll just suddenly explode. And what's especially hypocritical about this is, there's very little research on raw food diets. If you look at any literature review, they'll actually mention this multiple times throughout the paper that there's barely any research. So I guess based on your own standards, Rayleigh, if you feed your dog a raw food diet, your dog or cat is a guinea pig and you're just conducting some sort of experiment. And you know what's funny? Rayleigh knows this. Rayleigh knows that there is very little research on raw food diets for pets, and I know that she knows she knows this because she made this stupid video. She was not able to provide one single scientifically valid source of information to support any of her claims, and she knows there's very little research on raw food diets because she wasn't able to find any. And the little research that does exist is overwhelmingly negative. Rayleigh knows full well that she's actually putting her pet's health at risk and even her health at risk by feeding her dogs a raw food diet, yet she still continues to spread misinformation about this diet. Another interesting thing I found when doing research into vegan dog food, vegan dog food companies are are incredibly shady about how and where their products are produced at versus you can pretty much Google any other company's way of producing and manufacturing and processing their kibble. But for some reason, vegan dog food companies, especially Wild Earth, are incredibly quiet and secretive about how they process their ingredients and where they get it from. Yeah, so Rayleigh Link is completely full of shit and she's just trying to spread more doubt about vegan pet food and the story is just complete bullshit. 
So she's claiming, oh, vegan pet food companies, they're so shady, you can't trust them. They like lie about the ingredients in their products and they won't tell you where it's from. Bullshit. So she's holding Wild Earth vegan pet food in her hands. If you go to their website, they list every single ingredient in their products and they're just normal freaking plant foods. Uh, what, nutritional yeast, chickpeas, sweet potatoes? What's the issue with these ingredients, Rayleigh? These are, these are foods that you would find in a normal goddamn store. Are you telling me every single time you buy food for yourself, I'm assuming since you claim you're vegan, you've had chickpeas before, you've had sweet potatoes, do you like go up to the cashier or the manager at the grocery store? Hey, where did you get these sweet potatoes? How are they processed? What factory did they, they come from? Like, this is just fucking retarded. If you were to contact a, a pet food supplier and ask them these questions, they'd just think you're full of shit. No wonder they didn't respond to you. It's just a stupid fucking question. Where the fuck do you think chickpeas and sweet potatoes come from? I think it's important to note that no matter what type of kibble you feed your dog, dogs will only survive on kibble. They will never thrive and they will never live long, healthy, happy lives. Ranked by veterinarians, the best food to feed your dog is a fully raw, balanced diet. So these are just more ridiculous, unsubstantiated claims, and she's just flat out lying. Again, she has not provided any evidence whatsoever that a dog is going to be less healthy on any kind of commercial pet food versus a raw meat diet. This is just a baseless claim she has no evidence for. She even claimed, oh, a dog will never live a long life on, uh, you know, conventional pet food. One of the longest living dogs in history was a Border Collie who was on a vegan diet. You're just completely full of shit and you don't know what you're talking about. She also claimed, oh, according to veterinarians, raw food is the best. What fucking veterinarians? There's no legitimate veterinary organization who recommends raw food diets. The American Veterinary Medical Association discourages the feeding to cats and dogs of any animal source protein that has not been first subjected to a process to eliminate pathogens because of risk of illness to cats and dogs as well as humans. American Animal Hospital Association is against feeding pets raw or dehydrated, non-sterilized animal proteins. The World Small Animal Veterinary Association states that there is currently no properly documented evidence of health benefits for raw meat-based diets, but there are well-documented risks. As such, the WSAVA Global Nutrition Committee recommends that raw meat-based diets not be fed to dogs and cats. The Canadian Veterinary Medical Association states that documented scientific evidence of potential uh, animal and public health risks in feeding raw meat-based diets outweighs any perceived benefits of this feeding practice. And the only legitimate source that you referenced in your video Veterinary Practice News also recommends against feeding raw meat, raw meat based diets to pets for the reasons I've already specified. So Rayleigh, you're just flat out lying. You're trying to convince people that the majority of veterinarians recommend raw food diets when that's completely untrue. If it were true, you'd be able to show at least one single legitimate veterinary organization that recommends raw food diets, but not one single one does. And I know you're lying. I know you are lying deliberately just to confuse and manipulate people because in the video earlier you stated that all veterinarians are going to tell you that raw food diets are bad because they're paid shills for the pet food industry. So if dog kibble is so highly processed and so bad for dogs causing them cancer, obesity, certain tooth related diseases, why is it that veterinarians recommend dog food? Well, the answer might upset you a little bit. Almost all veterinary schools are funded by large dog food companies. A lot of the pet food industry research for veterinarians are also funded by dog food companies. So not only is the vast majority of these veterinary opinions completely biased, but it's also just flat out wrong. Oh, busted. It is so hilarious how you didn't even consider whether or not your lies are consistent. You just come up with what 
whatever lie is convenient in that exact moment. If you have to come up with a lie to make people distrust veterinarians and established veterinary medicine, to convince them to, you know, maybe consider going over to raw food, oh yeah, you'll tell them that, oh, veterinarians are all paid shills for the pet food industry and they'll lie to you about what dog food is healthy. But then when you don't have any actual scientific evidence to support your claims, you'll claim, oh yeah, all the experts, all the veterinarians, they all recommend raw food. You can't have it both ways, moron. Holy crap, I have never seen someone so stupid that they'd come up with a lie like this. And if you thought that was stupid, she actually made this mistake twice. After claiming that most veterinarians recommend raw food, she went on to claim most veterinarians don't recommend raw food. Ranked by veterinarians, the best food to feed your dog is a fully raw, balanced diet. But why do veterinarians not recommend raw food? And keep in mind, these two video clips weren't even a minute apart, yet she still didn't realize that she was contradicting herself with these lies. Oh yeah, most veterinarians recommend raw diets, but why don't most veterinarians recommend raw diets? You can't have it both ways, I'm afraid. So I think I've proven beyond any reasonable doubt that Rayleigh is just flat out wrong about raw food diets for pets. They're dangerous. Most veterinarians and veterinarian organizations recommend staying away from raw food diets for the reasons I've mentioned earlier. And I think more importantly, I've proven that Rayleigh is clearly deliberately lying. She knows she's wrong. I mean, just look at her video. She hasn't been able to provide one single shred of scientific evidence for any of the claims she's made. She's directly contradicted herself multiple times. She knows she's wrong, yet she's still promoting a raw food diet. I, I just don't understand why she's doing this. The only conclusion I can come to is that she just enjoys controlling, manipulating, and murdering animals. Which brings us basically to the last portion of her video. Uh, I'm gonna skip over some sections because she really just repeats the same nonsense pseudoscientific crap she's been spouting this entire video, but uh, towards the end she talks about some of the ethical reasons she's decided to do this. All of my meat is locally sourced from my local farmers. I know all the animals, I know all the farmers, and all of the animals are organically and naturally raised on open spaces. So I think it's important if you are going to feed your dogs a fully raw diet, but you also are vegan like myself and you understand that there's a bit of a moral dilemma there because I would obviously love to feed my dogs vegan or vegetarian vegetarian. However, that's not what's ethically best for my animals. But I also want to feed them the diet that is going to be best for them and best for the environment. So I think buying locally sourced meats and knowing the farmers, knowing the animals and having a direct source is the best possible option for people who want to feed fully raw but are also trying to be as ethical and sustainable as possible like myself. Okay, so that was a load of bullshit. She's clearly not vegan and she has gone full carnitard, making up the worst arguments I've ever seen from meat eaters. So uh, first off, she said, oh, well, you know, I get my meat from a local farm. I know the animals, so, you know, it's okay. All right then, so, you know, as long as you know your victims and they're local to your area, I guess it's okay to commit murder. So next time I see kids riding around my block on their bicycles, I guess it's okay for me to shoot them chop them up into little pieces and feed them to my dog. You know, I they're local to my area and I know them, so don't see what the problem with, with that would be. And uh, then she claims she's doing what's best for the environment. Well, no, clearly you're not. You're getting ruminant animal meat, which is by far the worst in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. If you look at the UN's latest climate report, chapter five, page 76, they look at the greenhouse gas mitigation potential of different diets. And on a completely plant-based food system, uh, you reduce much more greenhouse gas emissions than you do consuming ruminant animal meat. So I don't know where you got this idea that, yeah, getting ruminant animal meat is the most environmentally beneficial option versus just getting fully vegan plant-based dog food. I'd love to see evidence for your claims, but you're not providing any evidence whatsoever, so I have to assume you're full of shit. And uh, then she said, 
you know, I I'm trying to do what's best for my dogs. Okay, well, first of all, what's best for your dogs isn't necessarily what's most ethical. Just because a particular person can benefit off of doing something, that doesn't mean it's ethical. Suppose I was broke and I couldn't afford vet bills for my dog. Does that make it ethical for me to go out and kill somebody, steal their money, and then, you know, get use the money to pay for vet bills? It's what's best for my dog. So I, I don't see how it matters, even if we were to agree for the sake of argument that a raw meat diet is best for your dog, that doesn't mean it's ethical. You're killing animals that can live up to 25 years old. So uh, like, yeah, a dog that'll live maybe 12 years and murdering an animal that'll live about 25 years to feed to the dog. Doesn't quite make sense, does it? And I mean, the fact of the matter is, you have no evidence that a raw meat diet is the best thing for your dog. In fact, there's all the evidence in the world to indicate that it's not the best thing. So you are just, Terrible. You're human garbage. I don't really have anything else to say. Um, I guess we'll continue this in part two. This video ran a little long, so... Part two, we will discuss her second follow-up video to this, and uh, if you want to get vegan pet food, check out Vigor. Links are in the description down below. You can use a discount code to get 10% off of any order, and as always, keep making those vegan gains. What a relief! When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how. 